This is Toledo Symphony Lab, a behind-the-scenes look at the world of classical music from WGTE Public Media and your Toledo Symphony. I'm Brad Cresswell. Joining me today are the Toledo Symphony's president and CEO, Zach Vassar, principal second violin and artistic administrator, Merwin Sue, And we also have music director, Elaine Trudell, joining us by phone today. And we have some special guests here in the studio engineering students from the University of Toledo. There are three of them. I just want to go around and have you introduce yourself. Let's start with you, Graham. Hi, I'm Graham Fitkin. I'm a senior mechanical engineering. Okay. Caroline? Hi, I'm Caroline Shipman, and I'm also a senior in mechanical engineering. And Adam? I'm Adam Kemmer, and uh, I also am a senior mechanical engineering (laughs) student. (laughs) Very nice. So we have three senior mechanical engineering students from University of Toledo. You may be wondering why they are here today. We're talking about a really interesting project, with, which has to do with 3D printing. That's something that everybody has heard of, but there's a lot of exciting stuff going on there. Merwin, you want to tell us why you brought along these engineering students today? Well, I just picked three random students, and they all happen to be seniors <laughs> in mechanical engineering. No, I nice. think, so one of the things that we are trying to bring together here is the idea of innovation in classical music. And I think, I'm sure Zach's going to talk a little bit more about that, but I think we've been looking for projects that really connect some of the innovative minds of the University of Toledo with some of the happenings in the field of classical music. Alain brought to the table this really wonderful project that he worked with with the Ottawa Symphony and 3D printing and kind of creating violins and violin-shaped objects that were larger than violins but not quite violas um, into the hands of Ottawa Symphony musicians. And we decided to kind of collaborate with the University of Toledo's engineering department with a little bit of a different focus, but with this sense of 3D violins as kind of the um, the kind of the common ground. So these are printed violins, right? And and first of all, let's talk about the process of 3D printing. Can can one of the esteemed engineering students here? Uh, give us the 101, you know, sort of just the basics of, of how it works? Yeah, well, um, you can think of a average 3D printer as essentially a plastic hot glue gun on a uh, XY axis. So it'll move right and left and draw out this plastic and layer it down in a layer, and then it'll just keep moving down and do another layer and another layer and another layer on and on upward until you have your whole part. Interesting. So then how does it get, I mean, do you have to design it then, obviously, in, mm-hmm. in, in the computer? Yeah, so you, you, would, you would use your modeling software to create whatever intended design you had and then just upload it into your printer um, as a certain file and just set it up and start. So you can make, I mean, you like you mentioned, Merwin, you made something between a violin and a, a viola. I uh, did it, none of this. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But you know what I okay, you know what I mean, right? You can make you can make new instruments basically. Your imagination is the limit. It, which sounds really interesting to me. But I, I do want to touch on the, this idea of, you know, we all know about Stradivarius uh, violins and Guarnieri violins and other instruments that have were made hundreds of years ago. And how do how does a how does a violin like a three D printed violin and Elaine, I'll ask you this because you have a lot of experience with it. How how does that compare to like other great you know instruments in, in the canon of, of violins? Tell us about the, your project. Let me let me get a little music for you first. Oh, okay. Okay. There we go. <laughs> that seems appropriate to talk about future <laughs> <Yeah>. violins. <laughs> well, when we first did this project in Ottawa, uh, and that's the same. I still have the same idea. That is that. It's never meant to replace uh, the the instruments that we know and love, of course. It, it, it will never replace the violin that, that is used in the Brahms symphony. The idea is to create new instruments, to create new sounds uh, that are not necessarily comparable to, to other things because the material is different. And even within the, the composite of the, the, the ones we did in Ottawa and the ones we will do here, they're also very different. So. The idea is to create a new sound, create uh, some new technology, and a new repertoire, to have repertoire written for it, uh, and to, to do some new and exciting experiments. And also, um, at the end of the process, for me, it's very important 
to make this and that's the long-term goal for me to make to make it accessible and to make music accessible like this it's not new but it's fairly new the 3d printing and it's uh i would say you know in the last uh, two decades i guess and uh i don't know exactly when it started but uh The idea is that it, with time, and as all the new uh, invention and technology, it will become something that people use commonly, that, that they use more regularly, and, and it becomes less and less expensive. And perhaps we can have instruments, and not just in the string family, but maybe other families of instruments, that we can uh, that, that we can have at a, a low price, and also that we can have that are good in, introductory instruments, or instruments that make co completely other sounds. So there, there's many different things that we can work with this, and there's, so most of them are musical, but some of them are more aimed at uh, making the community uh, having more affordable and, and um, accessible instruments in different communities where sometimes they, they might not have access to that. Yeah, this reminds me a little bit of the conversation we had a few episodes ago when we brought in all the all of our kids, the young kids, you know, <laughs> ranging ages four to eight asking them about what they saw in the future, and they all talked about electric violins. Remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah, w which is uh, kind of an interesting correlation between their conversation and our conversation. I remember you talking about new instruments, and I assume you, you had this project in mind when you were talking about that. Yeah, well, we were able to uh, to realize um, a good part of this uh, in, in the past in Ottawa, but, uh, and we had a new piece written for it, very exciting piece, and it, it had to do with... Um, And uh, how do you say um, human intelligence and artificial intelligence compared to human musicality and a musicality that would come from sounds from those kinds of instruments? It's very interesting. It was a little bit a sci-fi experiment, also, and uh, the composer was very excited about that. Anyway, I, I hope to bring that piece uh, to Toledo at some point, yeah. and that would be a lot of fun. But I think the project we can do can go even further into uh, the accessibility uh, version of it. Well, you can play that piece or you can just play this. <laughs> right? <laughs> I think that this fits nicely. It would sound great with uh, as electric As long as there's violence. a low G, we're okay, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, well, if I can jump in for just a sec, though, I, th this concept of accessibility is really important because uh, it's really easy, I think, to get a uh, cheap woodwind instrument or a brass instrument. There are plastic versions of these uh, instruments, but it's not easy to get a stringed instrument. Uh, these things are often crafted over uh, long periods of time. There's a lot of uh, engineering of uh, kind of an old world way that goes into them. And if we can create something that uh, brings stringed instruments to a lot of people, basically wherever there is a, a 3D printer, you start to think about the ways that music education can be transformed. Yeah. So, you know, accessibility is, is one, being able to access the instrument, but also giving it to different parts of, of our community and our culture and, and the world uh, could have very far-ranging uh, applications. Well, I can imagine education that it, it can play a huge role, not only because, like Elaine talked about, you know, it reduces cost. You can get these instruments made Uh, for much less than you would a, a regular version of the instrument. But also this whole idea of inventing and modifying instruments and something that kids can get into themselves. And when I say kids, I'm also including the three of you from <laughs> <laughs> University of Toledo. Yeah. I, I wonder if one of you would take the lead and just talk about what the project is uh, that you're working on right now. Graham, you want to say something or you want to pass it off? Uh, sure. So basically what we're doing is we're taking uh, – 3D printed violins that are open source and we're making our own and mm -hmm. we're really focusing on the acoustics of it and being able to make something that'll last for a decent amount of time. Um, I guess along with it being able to be... Uh, Hang on, let me help you out here. <laughs> <laughs> along, along with it being able to be accessible, we want it to be able to teach kids about acoustics in general and how to build things kind of from the ground up so yeah. it's kind of kind of been our scope with the whole thing are you are any of you guys uh musicians i actually have played the violin for the past 16 oh, yeah? years okay so. hang on let me give you some new music <laughs> <laughs> all right it's perfect for that's me. caroline talking caroline shipman Give us a little background on you. Yeah, so I actually started playing at a young age. I was one of those kids that uh, the first moment that we could play the violin in school, 
I jumped right on it, and so I've been playing since I was. Figuratively you know, like, speaking, yes, you jumped on it. I actually did yeah. jump on a violin. It was a very bad idea. <laughs> I didn't do that. I didn't go that far. Yeah. <laughs> but so um, far, so I've, and I've been playing ever since, and I um, even played. So I'm actually a little bit different of a college student. I this is my second time around in college for another degree, um, and oh. my first degree was in biology at Ohio State. But I even played in the orchestra at Ohio State for a while. So what you're saying is that so. you're just a genius, right? No, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> maybe, maybe not, maybe not Merwin Sue level genius. But I like a, to a say I just, I just love school so much that I can't leave it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but then uh, this project came up uh, for our senior design class, and we, um, I. This is my project, I felt like. Yeah. It combined everything that I liked, um, music and engineering. And, and I've been able to, I, I hope, I've been a beneficial part to this group in that I can kind of tell them a little bit about what's required for a violin. Whereas, you know, yeah. somebody who's never played before, they'd be like, oh, there's this little thing <laughs> that holds up the strings. What is it? Right. And so <laughs> and, and, and we can move it over a couple of millimeters without causing any problems, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um. I, I just want to say, Zach, quickly before uh, that, Caroline, you, you talked about jumping on violin. It made me think of this as a great idea for like rock and roll violinists <laughs> that want to destroy their instrument at the end because if you can make like a cheaply printed violin, hey, mm. I can have half a dozen ready to go, <laughs> right? And when you're done with that Beethoven concerto, just slam it down on the ground, right? <laughs> get, get a little action going there. What do you think of that, Zach? <laughs> it would draw an audience. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know which audience. <laughs> Definitely make Caroline, I would, I would ask you though, <laughs> thinking about this project, I, I, what are some of the, what are the constraints that you're working under, and what are the challenges that make this exciting for you? And I'd open that up to your colleagues as well. So, um, just from the very start, it was one of those that none of us have ever made a violin before. We've seen it, we've held it in our hands, but we've never actually made it. And then you add the 3D printed aspect to it it really kind of changes everything. So it's been a, um, a little bit of a challenge in that all of a sudden we're going from a wood to a plastic. And it's how is that going to affect the sound of it mm-hmm. at the end of it? Mm-hmm. Um, especially if we want to make this for cheaper, we need to kind of keep um, all material costs as low as possible. And give right. me a sense of those costs. Like I know there are different polymers of plastic, different uh, uh, kilograms that you can buy. <laughs> I mean, what is the sense of uh, scale here for the direct materials? So um, for the plastic we're currently looking at, it's about, um, depending on where you get it from, 10 to $40 per spool. Mm-hmm. And a spool can make, we believe, up to two violins. Okay. So ultimately what it comes down to is you could have a body with a neck and a scroll at the end for 10 to $40. But that doesn't include the strings? Or, no. Yeah. And so we would then have to include the strings and like the bridge and yeah. the tailpiece, pegs, are, are those, everything. Those are not printed though, right? The strings? And um, the... We can print them, but we... Are or not serious? the Not the strings. Sorry. Not the okay. strings. <laughs> not the strings. Oh. Um, <laughs> Breaking news announcement. <laughs> <laughs> no, everything else on the violin we could theoretically print. But we've found through our research that every if everything on the violin is 3D printed, it really affects the sound quality. And mm-hmm. um, that's something if we want to get it to remote villages around the world mm-hmm. or even just an underprivileged neighborhood, we want them to still be able to experience what a violin should yeah. sound like. Right. It may not be exactly one-on-one. But so when you sell these things, it's like the, the action figure tree house that says, you know, strings not included on the <laughs> front of the box. No strings just attached, case, I think yeah, is what you're doing. No strings for. attached, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 our I, whole... Yeah, yeah. ideally we'd, we'd like to have it um, put together as, as a kit that you'd send, you know. So, so as long as they have access to a printer... Um, it be it you know violin oh, a kit, violin like, in a box kit you know like, they print their like own a Lego, mm-hmm. yeah yeah almost like a Lego kit and uh, they would print their okay, own okay so you send them a box with strings that says no violin included right <laughs> you got exactly. it exactly Excellent. we'll send them the, the chin rest and the yeah. the strings the bow the bridge right. 
But they got to make the violin themselves. Well, the bow is an important part, too. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. do you print bows or, or no? We haven't explored that option yet. Yeah. No. It would be, I think, <laughs> incredible. I mean, think about all the materials that bows are made out of now. They're not just wood. There's carbon fiber bows. There are these different configurations that create different sounds. But um, the amount of tension in the bow yeah. and, frankly, strings over the bridge, too, I imagine would be a, an engineering challenge to overcome. Well, Elaine, when, when they printed the violins, and I've seen videos of these violins, they, they have sort of an ivory color to them. They're a white color. They're, they're quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, you did, I assume you did not print strings or bows or anything like that, right? No. But what we, what we did, um, we, we needed to do, actually, they wind up being uh, the first prototypes were very expensive to do. Mm. Because you know it's the first prototypes. Uh, you have to find which polymer you're going to you're going to use for it. Uh, I think now we're a step, you know, many steps later. So the, the the experiment keeps on evolving, and we keep on getting better at doing things. But uh, you know, we had the um, people use their bows, um, and and we put we use different strings to, just to try on the different tension. Um, one thing that was a bit surprising is how well it held uh, for the high E, which is the string that has the most, uh, you know, tension in the high register. But the thing is that the instrument was quite thick, so we had to like, how could I say, do the, to to make it more simple, do v versions where the the instrument was a little bit more empty inside, so mm. so it was a less solid. But where was the limit where it could still hold the tension? But I there's one thing I really want to say, is that in the future at some point, a, a dream I would have would be that if we can use all this plastic that we've put everywhere in the ocean and the environment and create you know some uh, something for for the kids to learn from and instead of you know taking the the thing that we use that that is in the pollution right now i think that's something that's really that would make a real difference and that's a little bit the direction i want to take with it but it's a long way is to finding because there's so many different kinds of material in there that uh, I don't know how we'll get there. But uh, I think there's uh, some kind of hope in that we can use something that is now negative and turn it into something positive. Absolutely. When you said your dream, I thought you were going to say when they could print a trombone, right? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I have a plastic trombone. I have a yeah. bone. It's really nice. <laughs> but a full size trombone, yes, plastic course, trombone. Yeah. Yeah, okay, because I've seen oh, yeah. the little ones that you can sort of little bugles, you know, that you can play. Oh, they make, make trumpets from on the, the uh, as Zach said, the big challenge is string instruments, and and some of the woodwind instruments. They, I'll play those something for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you yeah. had that on yeah. hand. I was just going to say, <laughs> yeah. how many trombones are within an arm's reach right now of you? <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like Dick Van Dyke and right. uh, Mary Poppins. <laughs> so, Graham, I'd love to go back to something you said earlier, is that there are these um, open source uh, designs already in existence. So, you know, it sounds like we're building on something that already exists and we're trying to perfect it through science. Is that right? Yes, correct. Yeah, they're are a couple major, like, more popular ones that we kind of took our inspiration from mainly. One of them is the modular fiddle, and the other one is the hovelin. And they both work, and both of them are mostly 3D printed. Um, the modular fiddle happens to be more expensive, but it sounds better than the hovelin. Um, but, yeah, they're but, available but to be shipped and yeah. you and, uh, can pay money for them to assemble it for you or you can get what Graham was saying is like yeah. so the Havilan, um we that one is almost all 3d printed with the mm -hmm. exception of the strings mm -hmm. the um the tuner pegs and the bow and that one doesn't sound nearly as good as the modular fiddle does whereas the modular fiddle has a lot more um non 3d printed parts and so that's okay. where we're kind of taking our inspiration gotcha. is it's a hybrid sort of yes exactly yeah. and so and if you look at if you look these up and you look at pictures the hovelin looks beautiful the modular fiddle does not <laughs> and so that's kind of where our inspiration came from is how can we make it look like the hovelin but sound like the modular fiddle wow. for a lot cheaper than what the modular fiddle goes mm. for right now that's mm -hmm. really interesting adam i wanted to ask you because you raised your hand when i asked it, who were musicians in the room what, what, <laughs> what is your musical background i um i've played guitar for uh i want to say going on 10 years now yeah. um 
Never touched a violin, though, so the, the thought yeah. of using a bow on the strings is uh, very foreign <laughs> to me. But, but they make guitars, right? They will print, you can print a guitar? Uh, I've never seen a printed guitar. I have seen plastic guitars, though, so I right. imagine anything's possible. You could definitely make a, a child size yeah. 3D printed guitar. But you and Elaine could, could go on the road with your little plastic duo. Yeah. You could bring his trombone. <laughs> you bring your guitar. I have a quiz. I have a quiz for us, and this is a 3D printing quiz. Oh so you you All right. you kids from <laughs> UT may have to recuse yourself. Well, I, we'll and see. I got to say, Brad, I That's mean, th- we usually have a pretty nerdy show, but yeah. this is a really nerd-filled room right now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and and proud I say that take that as a great compliment. Great admiration. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So okay. quiz on. I, ha- I just have eight questions here. The- these are actually true or false. So you have a 50-50 chance, right? I like those odds. Yeah. So you guys, <laughs> you engineering whiz kids here, try hold back and see if somebody else can answer first, right? You, Don't forget. You're no, going to put Merwin and me on the spot on these? Seriously? And Alain, Alain is on the phone with us, too. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's going to have some cellular connection issues, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me pull up the uh, future tech music here. All right. So I'm going to give you eight different statements. We'll go through them one at a time. You tell me if it's true or false. Number one, 3D printing dates back to the early 2000s. True or false? I would say false. False? What do you say, Merwin? I think I'll say false, too. It feels like earlier. Yeah. (laughs) Elaine, you say false since that's the right answer? (laughs) Well, since it's the right answer, I think I'll join you. Okay, false. It actually began in the early 1980s when the first patent describing the process was granted. So it's been around for quite a while, the idea of it at least, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, now, engineering students, if I say something that's wrong, do not correct me, okay? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, we'll just pretend like it's right. Okay. Next statement. NASA printed a 3D pizza to feed its astronauts. True or false? This is true. Yeah. It was just in the news in the last couple of weeks, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I just do what they tell me. I want 3D <laughs> printed pepperoni. That's yeah. all I'm thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did not know that they could 3D print food, which I think is a much more constructive use than violins. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. It's kind of unsettling, yeah. though. <laughs> yeah. it is, but it's, it's whatever the, the goop you put into it. I mean, you could have some sort of soy uh, construct that you'd be printing with. Yeah. I mean, it probably doesn't taste like pizza. It might so it's basically it. a million-dollar easy-bake oven, right? <laughs> that you so you were talking so about. It's a good use yeah. of money. <laughs> okay. It's, it's NASA. Here's another one. 3D printers can also print houses. Like entire houses. Are there 3D printers that can print houses? At true or once false? or in pieces? I, would, I need the clarification. Well, I don't know. I can tell you, well, no. True or false? I'm going to go with <laughs> false. Really? Yeah. Uh, I was about to say true. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah, you're a little late to the to the quiz there. No, no, timing is everything for Let me tell you. Yeah, you're right. He's doing great. <laughs> China used giant printers to make ten houses in one day, each of them costing less than five thousand dollars. It's to actually create. a really cool process if you ever go online yeah. and look yeah. at yeah, it. It's just this arm it. that goes around like in circles, and it's really <laughs> cool. It, it, it yeah. is important to note that it's a circular house, so good luck putting a couch on the wall. Or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can print a circular couch. Yeah, yeah I, I guess. I guess. Yes. Form, can, form follows function. Doesn't yeah. sound comfortable to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, and you also probably don't want to be inside the thing while they're making it, right? Oh, it or when it rains. So bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to applaud our students for their uh, discretion and not answering any of these questions because you obviously know the answers, right? <laughs> Let me pull our music up again. There we go. Okay. Scientists have printed moving insects that are indistinguishable from the real thing. Oh, In other words, they can they can fool you into thinking they're a real live That's insect. True, true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say else? false. <laughs> <laughs> Merwin, last, you, last wait, chance. It's not true or false. No, it's what, wait. Did you say true or false? Oh, okay. he said true. Oh, you said false. <laughs> I thought there was a third option. <laughs> you, you said it was a 50-50 chance here. I don't understand. The third option is 33 it? point. And, and then you go to Merwin, the genius in the room, who's going to somehow <laughs> stitch this together. I see what's I happening. Was, I was yeah. waiting to see if you could come up I with th- an extra I thought one. there was a 50% chance you'd actually hit the right button on the soundboard. <laughs> no, these are, these are, these are, these are, hey, hey, I don't even have to look at it anymore, and I can just hit a button, right? 
<laughs> that's not the one I meant to hit. But that's <laughs> it, it really worked, yeah. Yeah. No, no. This is sort of in between true and false. I mean, they have the. There are dozens, hundreds of examples of, of insect reproductions that have been printed, but they're stationary, right? They look like the real thing, but they haven't been able to make, like, flying insects or insects right. that... You, you just you said know. the term insect reproduction, so is it that realistic? A, a reproduction of an insect. <laughs> no, but, you know... But we have to have something to strive for, right? <laughs> okay. But the, the scientists have made bones, and they've made organs, and, di- and replaced body parts and things like that. I read somewhere that scientists believe that one day they'll be able to print out an entire human being, which sounds, you know, simultaneously scary and fascinating at the same time. Maybe one of the people in this room will do it. Yeah. <laughs> Never know. Yeah, it, it's really cool. They can do um, prosthetics. Like, t- to your point, they, they can do prosthetics. So, like, if a child needs a prosthetic, they can 3D print it as they age and just grow with them, essentially. Wow. Whoa. This is That's really, really like amazing. opening up all kinds of ideas here. <laughs> okay, another one. Engineers have created a working car with the 3D printing process. True or false? True. I'd say true. That is true. There are 3D printed cars. If you if you uh, Google it online, you can see different pictures of them. Uh, really interesting designs. Some of them, you know, kind of like electric guitars. I mean, <laughs> electric cars, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Adam. Okay, who has the fender choke? Somebody has a fender choke. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well done, Merwin. Yeah. Plus one for Merwin. Uh, the first celebrity to, w- to model a 3D printed dress was Lady Gaga. True or false? I, 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 it, false. That's right. It's false. I don't imagine you know who it was. It, it, not not necessarily an A-list celebrity. <laughs> this is this was a model called Dita Fontes. Have you heard of her? Oh, sure. Yeah. I think I follow her on Instagram. She's yeah. my favorite. Uh-huh. Dita Fontes was the first model to wear a 3D printed dress. Final one. Scientists have managed to reproduce the Sphinx with 3D printing. A real life, uh, a model of the Sphinx. To scale? To scale. Does it yeah. have circular walls? I, I don't know. <laughs> Might have a couch inside. Do they Do they have the nose fixed? And, and actually, they have it set up. They did it so that you can see what's inside and so okay now i'm gonna say true because now you're talking about it (laughs) no (laughs) he was deep into that one you are a dita (laughs) fontes that's me (laughs) merwin is laughing so hard over there yeah um no it actually that was a riff on the truth they've actually reproduced uh king tut's mummy like the inside, you know, there's a sarcophagus, mm-hmm. and we're all familiar with pictures of that and how King Tut's mask looked and all that mm-hmm. stuff. What they did is used, you know, like X-ray or whatever imaging to get inside of the mummy, and they recreated the actual mummy on the inside by 3D printing it and put that mummy on display in Times Square in New York. So it's an interesting use. How would we know if they got it right? Of though? 3D printing. Well, I mean, they can use the internal imaging and see what it looks like, so you can look at that. I mean, it, and, it, and if you push a button, it does the King Tut routine from yeah, Saturday Night Live. Exactly, like it, yeah. <laughs> little Steve Martin. <laughs> I mean, we can't we can't say how do they know because then all of a sudden science falls apart, right? <laughs> I mean, how do we know that you guys didn't just make up this whole three D printing Maybe thing? You're we like, did. we did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're like, let us slip in a little. I just wanted to be fake on the radio. Violin. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's how. Don't do anything for fame. That's how my entire career got started. You know? <laughs> And they think I'm kidding. I just came in and pretended like I knew what I was doing. Push some buttons, get some coffee, you're fine, ready to go. Yeah. Perfect. What I'd love to do is talk to each of the three of you and have you just tell us where'd you grow up? What are you what are you looking to do with your career? What what fascinates you? What do you do in your spare time? Introduce yourselves. Graham, you start. All right, <laughs> deal. <laughs> I'm from Saginaw, Michigan originally. Um, in my free time I like I actually play instruments too. Um Drums so and you guitar. lied earlier. Yes. Yeah, sh- yeah. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, drums and guitar mainly. Um, as far as my career goes, I was really int- interested in this project because I'm interested in like acoustics. 
So I'd like for my career to go in that direction or like music production. I actually work at WXET, the radio station on, mm-hmm. on campus too. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and what's your sign? <laughs> Answer. <laughs> nice. Caroline, you're up. Okay. So um, I have actually been, I'm born and raised here in Northwest Ohio uh, from Perrysburg. Um, as I said earlier, I kind of started off with a different career path and I studied uh, forensic biology and criminology, and then... Wait a minute. Fre- <laughs> uh, okay. Forensic biology, criminology, criminology. And now I'm in mechanical engineering And a ET. violinist. Yep. Throwing a piano player in there, too, so... Wow. <laughs> There's nothing she can't do. <laughs> I guess <laughs> not. My head is exploding just thinking about it. Was it the King Tut's tomb thing that just yeah. turned you off of forensic biology? <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other story. This is taking yeah. an, an hour long just to explain. Um, <laughs> That's perfect. That's exactly yeah. how I felt. That, that's our intrepid leader, Elaine Trudell, on his on his, on his 3D printed plastic bass trombone. <laughs> and so, like I said, I'm in mechanical engineering now, and I'm actually looking towards working in kind of uh, the biomedical field, specifically with surgical devices or prosthetics okay. or implants. So you're going to be so, printing all this stuff out, right? Yeah, I've actually yeah. I've had a little bit of experience, kind of. 3D printing um, replica surgical devices at my co-ops and things like that. That's something so. you want to get right. <laughs> exactly, yes. And that's where the 3D printing comes in, which is nice, because you can yeah. do this replica and see how it works before you actually go forward with it. Yeah. Adam? Uh, uh, well, I uh, I have lived in southern Michigan around Adrian Tecumseh area for most of my life. Um, my free time, I like to uh, play guitar um, brew beer, skateboard. It, basically, if there's a hipster thing you can think of, I, I probably do that yeah. in my free time. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> now nah, you need a little more indie for me. So. That's but, okay. It's, it's you know just go with it. All right. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, this this project interested me um, for two two reasons. Like I said, I play guitar, so like the the instrumental aspect of it was important to me. But also, um, I've I've had experience using uh, 3D printing and other rapid prototyping technologies in my job and uh, that's actually what, what my plans are after school this this december i got full-time position already lined up and everything so nice. i'm done excellent well we're gonna have to wrap it up pretty soon here but uh elaine i wonder if we could give you the last word is there anything else that you want to say about this project that you did in, in ottawa yes uh it has it touches on on some aspects that are very important in my vision that the arts can do, uh, and uh, they're, they're very much in our time. Uh, one, of course, is, is about creation, creating things and uh, innovation. But another one is about, of course, sharing uh, the, the beauty of, of, of just making art or, or just the discipline of making art and, and, and just the, the, the accessibility of it to all places. But the third one that we never you know, really thought about in the arts is uh, environment. Mm-hmm. And if we can bring that to, to the table and create something positive out, out of that, I think we have something quite revol- revolutionary in this. Yeah. And uh, that, that's really my hope for that. And, and, and you can lead the charge doing that yeah. sort of thing and get other folks interested. Okay. Hey, Brad. Yeah. Can I play something else for you? Oh, yeah. Okay, let, let me put the phone down. Okay. <laughs> Is that, you can use that if you want. That's was that your plastic or was that a real trombone? That's my plastic trombone. That's amazing. Yeah. But did you use your mouthpiece? No, right. no, plastic uh, <laughs> mouthpiece that, that comes with it. <laughs> nice. That's amazing. It's, actually, it's my daughter's. She, she, she plays it in the... I showed you a video of uh, Merwin. Yeah, it's a It's the green trombone. It's green. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Color of hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other thing. You can make, like, um, you can make stuff out of... 
out of gold, out of silver, yeah. out of platinum. Mm -hmm. So that opens up a whole idea of brass instruments getting yeah. involved. Well, we already have an idea of um, of a, <laughs> a plastic band, not a brass band, but a plastic band with the uh, with some of our players, and uh, we've been talking about it. So we'll yeah. see. Um, I mean, for 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 kids and uh, and different neighborhoods. If only you could use it uh, with different uh, materials. You could actually have a rubber band. A rubber band. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that should have ended ten minutes ago. <laughs> anyway, uh, I gotta I gotta go vote. Go okay. Goes. All right. Thank you, Thank you for Thank calling. You in. Okay. Bye bye. I, I would just ask the uh, engineers in the room: What's the strangest thing you've ever three D printed or heard of somebody three D printing? <laughs> you can three D print anything. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, strange from my perspective would be a three D printed pe potato peeler because you didn't have one in the house and right. didn't want to go buy peeler. one. And... Okay, that'll be six hours. <laughs> Dinner will be ready at three a.m. <laughs> Honestly, that pizza sounded pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little goop. I don't know. Weirdest thing I personally three D printed. Um, this is going to show my my nerdiness here, but I three D printed a housing for a uh, cartridge converter from NES to the Japanese Famicom. So that's wow. Okay, you had okay. me until you started. Right? <laughs> so right. so I, I, I made made a thing to play Japanese games on an old Nintendo. Okay. That's pretty cool. I know what a, a Nintendo is. That's, right? that's, that's yeah. more my generation. Yeah. Although when you say old Nintendo, it kind of negates the association it's what you would I'm just a, call a nintendo yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly oh. <laughs> yes no How adjectives Man, i can't think of <laughs> the weirdest thing I, I feel like i've seen a lot of weird things that i've ever 3d printed but yeah. i can't think of the weirdest <laughs> but, but now if there was something that you you would like to 3d print that you haven't really heard about people doing yet uh, something come to mind no <laughs> i i would 3d totally 3d print a jet pack Right. <laughs> yeah. So I could fly around. Except I guess you'd have to get the fuel. It's kind of like bows and strings. But. Right. Yeah. 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 You're a little more ambitious than I. You you asked that question. And I was thinking, oh, there's probably some broken interior parts in my car that I could print. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's you're wild. over here with jetpack. I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, but the utility is really high. You know, it's, it's the sort of thing where I remember when people first started listening or listening uh, using the internet. You just sit at a cursor and figure out what you wanted to learn more about mm -hmm. or talk to others about it's kind of this open world now we have the same sort of thing from a from a physical perspective where you know if if the ashtray of your car has fallen apart you could just print another one or if you need a new hose to you know connect two parts you can probably th well maybe not a hose but they actually do have um like rubberized 3d printing technology but so you can make a rubber band we're getting back to my dream yeah pretty yeah. much okay. but definitely not on the consumer end very right. very expensive <laughs> right. technology Prototype. But I mean, yeah it, but we're also at early days and you know through your your studies and and research you, you know, this is the the future that we could suddenly have things on demand yeah. that solve problems well it also reduces mm -hmm. cost so much because you can have somebody design it in one city and yeah. then on the other side of the globe somebody can print it so you don't have to ship it you don't have to move it mm -hmm. all that sort of thing i mean yeah the future is wide open for this sort of technology merwin let me just ask you because you're a violinist obviously what are your thoughts on this whole uh, 3d violin printed thing have you ever ha held one and played one no, I haven't. I'm really excited about the idea because I think one of the things that we didn't really get a chance to delve into is a lens project, the project that happened in Ottawa. That was kind of luthier designed. This is something that like, you know. A luthier is somebody who uh, makes yeah, string okay. instruments, right? Yeah. And it, it's something that like, you know, there's all sorts of ways to talk about accessibility and having access to a luthier is not one of those things that everybody has. So I think when when discussing the project with, with your team, you guys were talking a lot about this is ne needs to be something that you can assemble out of the box. Anybody who can read Lego directions or Ikea directions yeah. should be able to put this together. And that's a whole another degree of accessibility. So I'm fascinated to see what you guys come up with. And you can also print out like, you know, they have smaller shaped violins for kids at certain ages. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you can do a custom violin for, for a person's body size, for their reach, for all those things, which mm -hmm. seems to me to be a great educational tool, tool as yeah, well. We're even hoping, um, time permitting, 
we're hoping um, on the, the violins, not only to scale them, but potentially add, you know, when you start playing the violin, you get pieces of tape that you put on the fingerboard, mm -hmm. which shows you where to put your fingers. Um, we're hoping to have that oh, sort well, of built into that. that's my problem. I never had those pieces of tape. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually, but we're hoping kind of somehow to put those into the fingerboard so that way somebody who's never even seen a violin or knows anything about it, they can be like, oh, look, this is where I put my finger down yeah. to do um, an A or a B or whatever we, you need to play. And we'll see how it works. Like I said, time permitting. Cool. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and that customizability is just another great way to um, to – to get kids interested in it, you know, because if, um, you know, they're focused on the arts, you know, now that now there's a science aspect to it too. And if they want to design, design it differently, you know, now more and more we're putting STEM in lower grades to, to develop that, you know, there's doing programming classes for kids now in, in, um, you know, early grade school. So that, that kind of helps mesh the arts and sciences together and, and just gets kids interested from an early age. Thanks a lot, guys. It Thank was fantastic. You. Thank you. Your Thank you. Symphony Lab you. debut. This program is a production of WGTE Public Media and is generously underwritten by the Rita Barber Kern Foundation in collaboration with our sponsor, the Toledo Symphony. You can download episodes of this program as a podcast by going to our website at wgte.org slash lab. You can also subscribe to us through your podcast app of choice, including Apple and Google Podcasts. And remember, you can check out all the upcoming events at the Symphony by visiting their website at ToledoSymphony.com and their various social media outlets on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. My thanks to Zach Vasser, Merwin Sue, Elaine Trudell, and our trio of uh, students from University of Toledo, Graham Fitkin, Caroline Shipman, and Adam Kemmerer, I'm Brad Cresswell, and this has been Toledo Symphony Lab from FM 91.